Welcome to Alloway Parish, wherever you're viewing from. It's great to have you along. Let us worship God together. Our first hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth. <laughs> And now we unite our hearts in prayer together. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we reflect on the wonder and glory of your being and the depth of your love for us, we are conscious of our failure to learn from you and from the love of your Son. So often our understanding of glory is linked with power prestige and position. Yet he came to serve. Forgive us when our selfish pursuit of glory takes precedence over your son's command to love. Forgive us for the times when we take without giving, reap without sowing. Forgive us when we put economic, racial, social, or other boundaries upon our love. Remind us, Father, that even when our love falters, your love remains constant. And in this Easter season, we remember you have the power to make all things new. So in this Easter season, renew and rekindle our love for you. Let us find joy in your service and in the service of others. Hear this, our prayer, and hear us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, you can probably guess by what I'm wearing that we're going to be talking about Christian aid. And before we go on and talk about that, can I simply say a big thank you? You may have noticed I'm wearing a little medal. It's true, four of us uh, managed to raise, thanks to your generosity, uh, over £9,000. And of course, our thanks to Tom Hunter from the Kilt Walk. But you know, this is Christian Aid Week. And this is the week where people perhaps will go door to door, or in our case, hold bookstalls, have special collections for what I believe is a wonderful charity, a charity that seeks to help some of the poorest in the world. But, you know, sometimes it, it helps us and it inspires us to see a little bit of the work of this charity. And so for a moment or two, I want to share with you uh, the story of Janet. Uh, Janet stays in Zimbabwe and Christian Aid have been helping her so over to Janet to share her story with you. Meet Janet Zuruga, mother of 10. Grandmother of 28, great-grandmother of eight. The four generations of Janet's family. Junior Kadore, great-grandson. Patience Muzengeza, granddaughter. Chipo Zirugo, daughter. Janet Zirugo. Janet's love for her family keeps her going, even in the hardest times. Janet has seen many changes in her lifetime. When we were children, we didn't worry about the challenges ahead. Janet has lived through extreme hardship. Drought has ravaged her village, leaving her community hungry. In the drought, we ate things we wouldn't normally eat. My heart was so painful thinking that my family would die. By God's grace, they did not. Thanks to kind people like you, Janet was given training and drought-resistant seeds. Janet has learned the best techniques to farm in dry land, and her garden has flourished. This project has changed our lives for the better. What makes me happy is to see my family strong and well fed. Janet has become successful through the opportunities she has seized. She is now able to provide for her family. I take them to school because I dream that if they have a good education, they will look after me in the future. God be with me and my family. Please look after them, Lord. Look after my livestock, my husband, and me too. Give me strength to fend for my family. The reading is from the New Testament, 
the book of Revelation, chapter 21, reading verses 1 to 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. Amen, and may God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Story told of a a wealthy man who died and went to heaven. He was met by uh, St. Peter at Gates and uh, was told he would be led to where he'd be living for the rest of his days. And so together they walked past the great castles, the, the manor house, the cottages, and then they came to this awfully poor, shabby looking hovel and St Peter says welcome to your new abode. The rich man was shocked he said I don't understand there must be some mistake and St Peter answered well sir it's just like this we did the very best with the money that you sent to us. When I was young I was told a very famous story about heaven it's the story of the woman who did a lot of good here on earth and the angel said to her We'll give you one wish. And she said, well, do you know what? I would like to see hell and I would like to see heaven before making up my mind. And so she was taken to a large castle, banqueting hall. And in the middle was all this wonderful food. On the other side there were, of the table, there were two rows of people. But they didn't look very happy. And the reason they weren't very happy was because they had been given very, very long chopsticks. And try as they could, they could not help themselves to the food. You know what happens next? The woman is taken to another place, looks almost exactly the same. But as she goes into this room, she can hear the joy and the chatter. Same thing, food in the middle, two rows of people, same long chopsticks. What's different here in this place? They have learned to feed each other. And what I like about that is it suggests that heaven is really all about sharing. It's one of the values. When we turn to our lectionary reading today, we also learn about the new heaven which is to come. It's not that we're given a lot of details, but I find this reading right towards the end of the Bible, the the book of Revelation, very precious. It's true we read about the new heaven and we read about the new earth and we read about the new Jerusalem and all that imagery is very important and, and speaks a lot to the people of its time. But here are the verses I find great comfort in. There he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, for the former things have passed away. I believe if you've been through a difficult illness, or if you have nursed people through a difficult illness, These are verses to bring you hope 
and comfort. For we believe there are things unseen in this world, and we believe as far as the next world is concerned, there will be no more death, there will be no mourning, there will be no more pain. And yet, of course, what Jesus said was that we shouldn't just be thinking about the world which is to come. How do we know that? Because in the Lord's Prayer, this is what He said. We were to pray that God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, no sickness, no pain, no hunger, no injustice. You know, of course, where we're going with this. When it comes to an organization which is of great practical help to some of the poorest in this world, I genuinely believe the work of Christian aid is vitally important. And I know, I understand there are other things which have been going on in the world. We've had COVID. We are in the middle of climate change. We, we think of Ukraine and, and the war there. But there's something else coming down the tracks. If at the moment you're concerned about prices of food in our supermarkets, then spare a thought for those who have no supermarkets and who will have no food. An unprecedented 283 million people in 80 different countries will be at high risk of food insecurity. Now, we can shout at the darkness or we can light a light. And how do you light a light? I think it's by giving and giving as generously as you can to Christian aid who have the contacts, who have the networks to ensure that some of the most needed help meets its target. We've never needed more support for Christian aid this year than in many a year. And to close, I would simply say this. If heaven is about sharing, and if heaven is about giving, isn't it time we started to bring more of that heaven down to earth in what we do. Amen. And now we unite our hearts in prayer together. Let us pray. Almighty God, in this Easter season, we give you thanks for your gentle and enduring love, for sending your Son to show us how to live, we bless you for the gift of life itself, for our lives and the life of this world. Grant us grace to respect the world, so that we in faith may see it through your eyes, hear it through your ears, touch it through your hands, and leave it as a place pleasing to you. In this week, we give you thanks for Christian Aid and other organizations in the world who work throughout the world challenging poverty, injustice, inequality, and world climate change. Open the hearts and wallets of people that this week they, seeing the need of their neighbor, might respond generously. We remember also, Lord God, with tenderness, those suffering the world due to coronavirus pandemic, particularly, again, those most vulnerable in poorer countries. We pray for the sick, for those who are afraid, 
We remember those who are grieving or isolated. God, be their healer, their comforter, and their protector. Jesus, you said, blessed are the peacemakers. God of all peoples and nations, show us the way of peace. We hold before you, especially the peoples of Ukraine and Russia. We long for that time when weapons of war are beaten into plowshares, when nations no longer lift up sword against nation. Protect those who only desire and deserve to live in security and safety. Change the hearts of those who are set on violence and fill leaders with the wisdom that leads to peace. Kindle again within us, Lord God, a love for our neighbour and a passion for justice. And all these things we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we close our service singing along, I hope, to a wonderful Christian aid song, I Have a Voice. I have a voice, you have a voice, we have a voice, and when we sing together, a line is drawn, and hope reborn. This is the song, the song of kingdom come. I have a voice, you have a voice, we have a voice. When we sing together, a line is drawn and hope reborn. This is the song, the song of kingdom come. We heard the cries of distant neighbors, the dispossessed, the refugee, and God's command to feed the set them free and set them free we heard the word the new commandment and we reclaimed the prophet's call to love the world without condition God's love for all God's love for all I have a voice sing together, the line is drawn, and hope reborn. This is the song, the song of kingdom come, a reckless love that knows no borders, that speaks the truth to those in power, that shines a
sing together. A line is drawn and hope reborn. This is the song, the song of kingdom come. I have a voice, you have a voice, we have a voice when we sing together. We close saying the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.